Hello, all stars, and welcome to Movie Night. I actually played this a long time ago, and I honestly don't remember what ending we got, so let's start. Knock, knock. You hear soft steps coming closer from the inside of the house. You can't help but let a small smile loose on your face. No one was seeing you, so who cares? You've been looking forward to today for weeks now. You could allow yourself a little self-indulgement. The door squeaks open just in time so you don't give away how giddy you are, which is a good amount of giddy. You quickly get a hold of yourself right when the door opens that little much needed to let voices slip through. Who's there? You had to restrain a giggle as you reply. Pretty. Pretty who? Pretty nice you'd open the door for me. You hear a snort from the other side of the door before seeing it finally open. Hey bud, how's it going? Always nice to see Sansa's goofy face smiling at you. You haven't seen him in what, weeks, months? It will never fail to warm your heart. Except for now. Now it was failing. Even Sansa's big old grin could do nothing against the air, the freezing cold air that was currently rattling through your bones and biting at your butt. Was about to think you'd never show up. You asked if he was falling asleep. Maybe. Yes. That didn't surprise you. Yeah, I probably would have done the same. And that's why I hang out with you. Not counting on your pen and humor, of course. You really get my deep and absolute irrational love for naps. Oh, you do. You absolutely do. Best time for nap time is always right now. Papyrus doesn't share our view, but eh, even the greats have flaws. Even when he knew you were coming, he ran outside shouting something about a surprise in the oven for you. Not his exact words, but I think you get the idea. The thought of Papyrus cooking specifically for you activates your fight or flight response. You freeze for a second, somehow associating the most rational thing to do with faking your death. Don't worry, just stick whatever it is in your pocket and then excuse yourself to the bathroom to flush it. Just try to look as you're enjoying it, okay? You slowly nod. Besides, I have enough chips and snacks to feed a skeleton for weeks. You may die of food poisoning, but damn, I guarantee you, you won't starve today. Well, that's some kind of reassuring. Come on in. Couch sounds better than standing outside. The warmth of the house is nice on your skin after the cold outside breeze, especially after you talked outside for no reason like idiots. You happily take off your coat and scarf, finally free from the suffering clutches of synthetic cotton. Sans lets gravity help him settle on the couch. He rests his pink slippers on the nearby table, maintaining eye contact, and you thank heavens Papyrus isn't there to see him. Make yourself at home. He dresses to you in your heavy coat. If you were at home, you'd just throw it behind you as soon as you enter the door, but you figured that would be rude, so you just sell for the clothes hanger. You're no fun. You stick out your tongue at him. What? Throw your coat at him. He's caught off guard as the heavy pile of fluff lands on his head, and he doesn't seem to regret teasing you. <laughs> of course you don't. Okay, that was kind of fun. You're very proudly puff out your chest, declaring your victory. Ha! Look at you! You are fun. So very fun. Treat the life of the party. Well now, don't let that go to your head, friendo. Carried away, you drop yourself on the couch laughing maniacally, like you were the dungeon master ready to drop some absolute bull on the naive little players or something. Sans joins you slightly after with his barge and chuckle. He doesn't put in as much energy as you, but you appreciate the effort. And then your laugh dies down, and his too, because as much fun as it is, you know you can't just do it all evening. It would be inconvenient. How would you eat then? And you two were left in a bubble of slight uncomfortable silence. But against everything you believed to know about this skeleton, he took it upon himself to break the silence. Not sure if it was out of boredom or out of pure knowledge of your adversity to talk first. So, you were thankful either way. I really don't know when Paps will be back. Could be minutes, could be hours, who knows. Great, more awkward silence. Bring it on, you thought. 
You already embarrassed yourself anyway. Could you really sink any lower? The answer was, and you knew it very well, that yes, yes, you could. So, uh, do you want to wait for him or because he's so cool and because he's already seen everything in the movie box, he said we could start without him. But we have to pause if we get to the good bits. He really doesn't want to miss them. I have no idea what the good bits are, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. You doubt that considering his cynicism towards movies, but whatever. In the worst case scenario, you could just turn off the TV as soon as you hit the door open. But on the other hand, you could feel guilty to start the movie already. You could peacefully wait in the uncomfortable silence, couldn't you? Um... Start the movie. Well, then buckle up and grab some popcorn. The screening's about to start. There's no popcorn. Don't bother looking. <laughs> well, you are a little sorry for that starting without papyrus, but it's a little less probable to embarrass yourself when all the eyes in the room are pointed at the screen. At least you hope that's how it worked. Sans picks up the remote and starts to wander aimlessly into the vast assortment of movies. They're all Papyrus's picks, so you're not surprised to see an outstanding quantity of animated movies and cartoons. You watch the movies scroll frantically on the screen as he searches for the lucky movie, not even paying attention as he pushes select. This is one of Pap's favourites. Or maybe paying a little attention? They're all his favourites. Definitely, definitely not paying attention. It's a movie about dragons and kids who like dragons. Long term attention isn't really your forte, but it hasn't been even five minutes since he hit play and you're already starting to lose bits of plot. Usually there was a papyrus to prevent this kind of situation with his comments and advice to the prognosers that hardly listened to him. But now you were alone, alone with Sans. Were you supposed to talk? Chat? People chat during movies, right? That's why they go to see them together, right? Wait, no. Wasn't that rude thing to do, to interrupt while someone was watching? Maybe there's only valid for theaters. Well, um, stay silent then. You just stay silent. People don't talk during movies. You can't do that regardless of where you are. Unless you're Papyrus. If you're Papyrus, you could do it whenever you wanted during the movie. Unfortunately, you're not Papyrus. This doesn't mean you wouldn't try to do something. Who knows when the next time you'll be alone with Sans will be. Better seize the opportunity. Take the leap. Make lemonade. One of those, anyway. You patiently wait for a chaotic scene. That would usually happen later in the movie. But I guess today's your lucky day. You put both of your hands on the couch and carefully lift yourself, scooching a little closer to scenes. All of that from before dies as soon as your elbow brushes accidentally against his. And just like that, your entire body freezes and you become a blushing, nervous mess. Damn elbows always causing you problems. It's unlickability made you lose... Wait, unlickability? 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 What? Made you lose 20 bucks once and now this. An unnerved sound escapes yourself for the frustration and you mentally slap yourself as soon as you notice. Maybe, maybe he didn't notice. Of course he didn't. He's busy watching. You could always say you were mad at some characters or something like that. You slightly tilt your head just enough to see his face. He's so close now. Moving closer was a bad idea. You wanted to go back to your corner, but you're in too deep to go back now. You turn your head to the screen, hoping he didn't notice you. And he didn't. Actually, he doesn't look like he's noticing the screen either. His lids look heavy, and he's having trouble keeping his sockets open. Without Papyrus shouting in his non-existent ears, he doesn't have anything keeping him from just dozing away. His head falls backwards, and he succumbs to the sweet embrace of nothing. Gosh, you wish that were you. What, you wish that was you as in the couch, or wish that was just you dozing off? You guess he really needed that good old nap, eh? He didn't look too comfortable. Then again, this is Sans. He could sleep through a car crash. You look apprehensively at the thin bones of his neck. They looked rather delicate to support that big head of his. Should you wake him up? Um, let him sleep. You leave him be. Lord knows how tired the poor guy must be to fall asleep like that. 
though you tried to adjust his position just in case the image of his neck snapping in your mind became reality. An irrational fear, way more powerful than you desired, not to wake him up. You gently push him against the back of the sofa. He bounces backwards like a sack of potatoes, but not surprisingly, he slept through it. So yeah, your job is done and you can now focus on this movie you weren't even watching in the first place. You're about to go to the kitchen to at least try to look for popcorn when you suddenly feel something on your shoulder weighing you down. Oh no. It takes you a while to recognize that some that's something as Sansa's skull. Shit, 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 shit. Now you're really boned. You stay still as a statue as you feel his breath brushing your neck. In your in your head, you're spinning 1,000 thoughts and none of them even remotely useful. Your heart is pounding so hard you think it might get out of your chest and slap you because what a fool. Being trapped in this situation, you literally just walked right into it. You hold your breath to calm you and your movements down. You don't even want to think about the awkward silence you'll get into if he wakes up like this. The awkward silence you're in right now is already enough. You... Just try to watch the movie. Yeah, let's do that. Every now and then he mumbles something in his sleep, but after a while, you don't pay much attention to him anymore, having accepted your new job of human pillow. Actually, you don't pay much attention to the movie either. Not that before you had, but now both images and sounds float peacefully in the back of your mind, focusing on anything in particular. Before you know it, your head is resting on Sansa's skull, and your eyes are closing. Oh no, we fell asleep. Everything is pitch black. You can't see a thing. There's no floor under your feet and no ceiling, no sky over your head. In your ears, you hear a vague sound of static, like they're getting sore from the absence of noise. You don't even know if your eyes are open right now. You don't feel them. Every part of your body is numb. You can't feel it, but some of you know it when you're moving. Not that there's anywhere to go. Is this a dream, right? Somehow, you just know it is. How much time you spent in there? A few minutes? A few hours? You can't recall. At some point, you perceive a change of scenery. Your body acquires weight again. You can feel your fingers, your arms, and your legs. What do you feel? Cold. You feel a gel of cold slithering into your skin, wrapping around your bones. But you don't mind. As you get used again to the sensation of your body, your eyes start to require sight. Reacquire sight. What do you see? White. You puff out on your gelid hands, rubbing on each other to keep themselves warm. Your boots squash down on the soft, now leaving a clear trail of footprints on the pristine white landscape. Are we in Snowden? You just keep walking and walking, passing trees and little houses until you stop in front of a place that looked warm. You open the door and find yourself inside a weird bar full of weird people. You feel a familiar warmth in here while drinking hot chocolate. Like drinking hot chocolate when outside, it's storming kind of warmth. You reach the counter and ask for hot chocolate. The bartender stays silent but looks rather confused by your request. You sigh and sell for a martini. You don't even drink, but you don't want to walk out without buying anything. He looks even more confused. You're about to say something when someone taps you on the shoulder. You finishing that? Sounds was pointing at a ketchup ball in front of you. Weird. When did that get there? Give it to him. He, <laughs> thank you, bud. He grabs the ball, taking a seat next to yours, and starts gulping down the entire ball in one go. You are impressed. Bring another, Grilbs. The bartender searches under the counter and brings up another ball that Sansa immediately brings closer to him. Are we in Grillby's? Are we dreaming about meeting him in Snowden? Put on my tab. The bartender makes a vague, annoyed sound and goes back into the kitchen. Sans spreads some ketchup onto his hands and offers it to you. Want some? You but politely decline, but you appreciate the gesture. Never seen you around here before. You tell him you come here twice a week, but that's a lie. You only come here once a week, and you always skip the first week of the month. He just hums in response. You ever seen Waterfall? You say that, no, you've never seen it. He grabs a glass of water nearby and pours it onto the ground. Nobody noticed it, not even the bartender. Pretty cool, huh? 
You giggle, despite how low taste that was. Glad you like war because it means you're already like 78%. <laughs> you already like 78% of me. You wink and rest your cheek on your hand as you tell him you were determined to make it to a hundred. <laughs> That's like smooth move. Smooth move. I like that one. Nothing moves. Aside from the lights furiously flickering in his eye sockets, you hear someone in the bar whistling. Or maybe that's just your imagination. I... Uh... Sans! What are you doing? This is not napping time! You wake up unaware of your surroundings and with no idea of what's going on. You look around and see Sans still struggling to open his eyes. Sans, of course, you vaguely recall him being in your dream. Who knows if it was because of the proximity, because of your latest Sans-related panic, or because of some weird dream portal that you can accidentally op open sleeping next to each other. If you dreamed about him, maybe he dreamed about you. It was a narrow possibility, but what the heck. You ask that to him, hoping to not seem too creepy. <laughs> I, I guess. Kind of. Maybe. Well, that was a weird response. Sans, what do you think you're doing? Called napping, see? Even the human likes it. You prefer not to be dragged into their family discussion. I suppose. But the human didn't nap during the morning, too. You don't, you don't know what I do in my own, like, morning time thing, stuff. So the supper is over here. In fact, you did, but as you said, you'd rather stay out of this. You don't know that. Yes, I know. Look. He turns to you. Human, did you nap this morning? You shake your head and hands silently signing to move on. See? I knew they'd do the right thing. Sans doesn't seem to buy it, but he leaves you be. So brought us food? Nope. Because of you, I had to get here in a rush. I could feel something was not right. But as always, my big brother instincts was right. Wait, Papyrus is the big brother? You could have sworn it was Sans last time you checked. Better check again, just to be safe. Oh, you want to know if I'm the big brother? I... Hmm, Sans, who's the big brother? Uh, I don't know. There was an awkward silence between the two while they stare at each other in the eye sockets. It's Sans. Sans is the older brother. My god, how did they forget who was older? <laughs> we have no idea. That's good. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll go try to do something based on the commitment sources, as that's pretty much everything we have. Um... That leaves you alone with Sans, again. Actually, I have something important stuff to do. Alone. Downstairs. Do they have a downstairs? Go help Pops, I'll be away for a while. He awkwardly finger guns you, and in the moment you divert your eye, your gaze, he's gone and nowhere to be found. He's probably downstairs. Well, that solves one problem you suppose, but he almost looked like he was avoiding you. Could he have done something that bad? You try not to think about it. Probably just him being... Having a weird moment. You have weird moments all the time and no one thinks you're avoiding them. You hope. You dismiss the thought and move on to the kitchen. Did he... Were they sharing the dream? Like, was Sans actually dreaming the same thing as us when I had our character say that line to him? <laughs> Did I really hit on him? The first thing you see as you make your way into the kitchen is Papyrus's butt wiggling in the air. He's humming some cheerful tune as he searches waist deep something edible in the garbage disposal they call a fridge. You knock on the fridge door to get his attention. Human, I'm not done yet. I can't come watch TV with you. I have to prepare food. Not really sure what to make yet, but I'm sure I'll think of something. I am great after all. You must propose if he needs a hand. I would love that very much. Thank you, human. This will come out two times as great. I just don't know what this is yet, but this won't stop us. <laughs> it surely won't. You peek into the fridge to see if something useful is there. Ketchup, mayo, mustard, maple syrup. 
Why do the two skeletons need this to survive? What do they do with it? Oil their car? Is there really all of this just for Sansa's consumption? Maybe if you brought him a ball as a peace offering. You must some balls of colourful goo and in the farthest corner you find eggs. You take them out and hand them to Papyrus. Could be worse, you can do a lot of things with eggs, like cooked eggs. You know damn well Papyrus could slurp them raw, so you don't even mention that possibility. Eggs? Eggs. He doesn't look too convinced. Although I'm great, I have to admit that I'm not very good at handling eggs. Last time I opened one, it smelled so bad I needed an entire bowl of perfume to wash it away. I suspect it got mad at me for cracking it with such fierce. That's not how perfumes work, and that's not how eggs work either. You're pretty sure Sans is the one who taught him the perfume trick. After checking the expiry date in the box that was miraculously due in a few weeks, you tell him not to worry about the smell. If you say so, human, I confide in your abilities and upgrade you to co-chef. I am the chef and you can tell. After all, I am the one who knows where the butter knives are. Couldn't argue with that logic. So tell me, co-chef, what are we making today? Oh, we already decided to go on and make crepes. Not only because they are thin and light and you couldn't eat a whole pancake even if you tried, but because you're pretty sure you can only make crepes with the few ingredients you have. I don't know what those are, by the way. Also, there are all liquids, ergo pretty hard to mess up. Even Papyrus couldn't make a mess out of this, but as much as you wanted to give your everything in cooking with Papyrus, you couldn't stop yourself from thinking about Sans, about that weird way he acted before. What if he didn't like crepes? What if he preferred pancakes? What if he hated you now? That's it. He must have realized he hated you while he was sleeping. Is everything okay, Co-Chef? You've been thinking for quite a while now. Actually, you tell him what's troubling you. You tell him about Sans and the weird way he acted before, and you tell him about how you're worried that he's avoiding you because you did something wrong. At that point, the box of eggs in Papyrus' hand flies against the room and slams onto the nearest wall, where there goes the eggs. You horrifyingly watch as your potential dinner pathetically slides on the wall. You're about to ask something, but Papyrus firmly places his hands onto your shoulders and makes you stare directly into his eye sockets. Oh, good lord. Uh, you? Kidding me? Unable to form words, you shake your head instead. He takes a deep breath for reasons to you still unknown. Human, I love you so very much and considering you one of my bestest of friends, but now you're being utterly stupid. He's, you still don't understand what's all the fuss about. I really don't know if I should be the one to say this, but I see you leave me no choice. He likes you, human. Did, what? Where? Oh, wait, I'm just gonna say, did he tell you that? N n not really, no. But as you know, I'm an expert in dates. It is very easy for me to deduce feelings. You just that has to do with his date diploma as much as his knowledge, his knowing his brother. You know he told you the intentions of relieving your stress, but you can't help but... As he tenses, as, as he's... Ugh. But what are you supposed to do now that you know he likes you, too? Just face it? Too straightforward? Ignore it and act as if nothing ever was? No, that'd be a waste. Maybe it's just a hint at it and wait for him to do the first move? What are you talking about? He never makes the first move. God, you needed help. As you were muttering to yourself, a pirate grabs you once again by the shoulders. I can help you. Uh... Please? help me I'm so happy right now don't you worry human as no one knows my brother better than me I know exactly how to help you figure this out with the ancient art of role play of course oh no I'll be sans so you can practice for real thing <laughs> that sounded reasonable yeah you're into this let's do it okay we're starting don't be too blown away by my sans impression impersonation as he takes a moment to concentrate so what's up the resemblance is impressive. I, I actually, oh my god, I actually have this package of ketchup with me. Would you, do you want some? <laughs> Quick 
basically getting on his good side with goodies, so that'll be more including to pay attention to what you'll say next. Brilliant! I mean, sure. <laughs> Don't worry, breaching the ice is always the most difficult thing to do in any conversation. You could wait it out until it melts, but I don't find it to be as effective. Anyway, the worst is over. You've established a contact. Things can only go up from now. So now you need to find a normal topic of conversation to keep him hooked. Anything will do, just refrain from mentioning your undying love that will come in later. Is a Brita technically a sandwich? Facing him with a silly uh, debatable problem to clear his mind so that the next thing you'll say will resound with him more? Marvellous! Though burritos are not sandwiches, that's a beginner's mistake and always remember that. Now that you've brought the conversation forward, it's time to butter him up and prepare him for the fireworks. We don't actually have fireworks, but I think you got the idea. You don't know how he's going to react. He could watch and appreciate the fireworks, or he could run away and act like a tiny dog in despair. The mere thought makes you skip a beat and not in the good sense. Thanks a lot, Pops. And you don't want that, so it's a good thing... So it's a good thing an everyday special, specialized will tell you to have a feel of the ground with a compliment. <laughs> You're like an elevator ride with puppies. Awkward, but still cute as heck. Wowie, thank you! Being compared to puppies is the best compliment one could receive. Your social skills are far more developed than I thought, because if you think about it, he was really awkward, but he's cute. I am very impressed. This is the first time or probably the last time you hear something like that. You did this great this far. Not that I expected any less from a teacher like me. <laughs> but enough playing around. This time, take the opportunity. Or how you can say, Capri Dembe. Or whatever that is. Grab the moment, human. The most important moment of all, the romantic confession. The moment you confess, there are no suggestions I could ever give you for this moment. You were starting to doubt the validity of his coaching sessions. Just a little. Follow the suggestions of your soul, human. Those are the only valid suggestions you could receive right now. How? Now do your best and make me proud. I really like you, son. You opted for a minimalistic confession. What, human? I couldn't hear you. You repeat it again. I said what? I couldn't hear you. You repeat again at a louder volume. Again, this time with hard. You put your heart into it, nearly shouting. That's the spirit one more time. I swear to God, if, if Sans walks in now because we're shouting, I like you, Sans, at the top of my lungs when he's supposed to be downstairs in the basement, I'm going to blame this on Papyrus. You fully yelling now, telling everyone that yes, you like the guy who slipped who wore slippers because he was too lazy to tie your shoelaces. That's him. He doesn't even have... <laughs> okay. Your face is burning up so much you can't feel it anymore. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, jeez. Yo, what's up? <laughs> this always happens, doesn't it? What were we expecting to happen? What were we expecting? We are literally shouting this at the top of our lines. There's only two people in this house and Papyrus is loud as hell. So of course I'm loud too. So what's up? You freeze, nearly falling on your knees from shock. Looks like Papyrus is nearly as shocked as you are. We, he clears his throat. Sans brother, there's something the human would like to tell you. He nudges you forward like a mum bragging about her child. I, uh, okay, well, I, I, that was not what we practiced. But don't worry, that's why I'm here. Sans, the human likes you very much. They have a huge crush on you, brother. They wanted to tell you themselves, but their huge crush didn't let them. So I'm telling you, they want to go on a date with you. <laughs> this, this is how you die. I, and... Don't you dare say no. They already know you like them back. At least you don't die by yourself. Now, if by May, my job here is done. And with that, he flees out the door and leaves you two alone. Whoa. So, uh, yeah, guess that sells things. Sells what exactly? Don't know about you, but we both like each other, so 
pretty easy to figure it out. But I'm gonna spell it out for you. A date sounds fun. You agree. We should really thank Pops. You should! Oh my god. That was pretty much it for the evening in terms of relationship development, but hey, you'd say you've gotten pretty far. You two agreed to give it a try. If it doesn't work out, you could always go back to being friends. But you secretly really hoped it will work out. Papyrus too hoped it will work out, but he was not too discreet about it. <laughs> oh my god! When you went back to the living room, you found Papyrus was already celebrating your engagement and planning your wedding. Oh no. Oh my god. You will either end up breaking up or living together forever, and I'm sure hope it's the later, he said, when trying to make it tone it when trying to make him tone it down a bit. You weren't really sure you liked the reminder of the two options, but you appreciated the enthusiasm. He said it was already a lot of work to help you get together. The dating planning would have had to wait. You just settled with continuing watching that movie. Oh my god, that's so cute. I love that. Well, you've watched ten more minutes before Papyrus reminded... Uh, remember the mess he did in the kitchen. You and Sand exchanged egg puns the entire time. How romantic. Ending. Matchmaking. I actually liked that ending. That was so cute. I loved how Papyrus was involved in it. Uh, so you guys always want to try this game for yourself and try to get any of the other endings. Feel There'll be a link below to the game. And yeah, just try to look and see what you get and let me know which ending you guys got. So yeah, bye. See you in the next video.